Hello there everyone and welcome back to the American Civil War mod. We're continuing with our different custom battles in different scenarios and as per requested by you guys, you wanted another one where uh, European powers intervene in the American Civil War. So with this one we've added on to the strength of both sides. So uh, we've got the French and the English an Anglo-French intervention into the American Civil War and we got two Union armies across the field somewhere over there. With that said, um, you found it quite easy to figure out that it actually was the Gettysburg battlefield in the last uh, video I did of the um, intervention. So I'll ask you again to try and figure out which a battlefield uh, this is. And with that said, let's jump straight into the battle, shall we? And the battle is off! So, um, this is actually the third attempt at doing this battle because in the two previous attempts um, it ended up rather quickly as being a complete and utter rout for the Union forces. So I am hoping that this time around I have uh, evened out the um, the amount of troops and so forth to be in a clear favor of the two Union armies and hopefully uh, we don't have a massive rout within the first couple of seconds. A lot of what happened was that I made all the forces even in strength and uh, what, yeah, with that what happened was that the British, usually what I did, I was move, I moved up, I took my positions. The Union started moving forwards and, you know, sort of blob because there's so many Union troops. And then the British just charged them and uh, somehow managed to break them every single time, uh, more or less. So, um, hopefully that won't happen this time around. So, the my French troops will actually get to fight a little bit more. This battlefield has a lot of uh, bottlenecks and uh, being at it is I decided to switch sides. You can probably see in the intro that we're actually on this side. Um, but I decided to switch side because I thought the AI would have an easier time on this side. Not entirely sure if that's true. And also that means that the AI kind of ends up on the defending side, which means they're not too keen to move out right at the start. However, hopefully, that will change. Clearly it has kind of changed because I can see units moving forwards. And I also boost, I boosted the um, Union artillery quite a lot, so hopefully they will be able to blast any British roast beefs and froggies as we approach. Very important to move the cavalry up front. One thing that the AI does, which I'm so annoyed at, is it keeps throwing its generals away. Moving up Sheridan and uh, I don't know who I put on the other army. I put Sherman. So Sherman and Sheridan. Um, and they keep throwing the generals away, which I'm quite annoyed with. But they have some good troops, so this should hopefully be a quite good fight. Did I get my 12 pounders up here? Right on the edge of the forest, so my main point is to hold... Or sort of build... Build my battle around this hill as this sort of main defensive point. They gave us a good warning shot there to move this cavalry unit, which I will. We'll actually move it into the forest. It still, it still will be able to uh, scout forward moving troops without di being directly in the uh, fire range of the enemy. There's another good hill right here, uh, which you would hope the British to take, but I don't think they're the British AI is that clever. We got British General Ryan over here and we got Sheridan now kind of almost cut off from his own army so once again 
the AI is throwing away their general. Okay, since this one is moving away, they have switched and start bombarding this unit. I want to really see what the AI is doing, so I'm going to send my cavalry all the way over there, which means we're going to cross the stream twice. Might be difficult for my unit, but we'll see. Let's be move our general forward and I've got my reserve brigade set up behind the cannons we've got first brigade moving over there we've got second brigade moving to take the main point and then third brigade to be here in the flank uh, should be pretty good Ooh, they we're taking a lot of uh, cannon damage here, so I clearly boosted uh, <laughs> boosted the Union cannons quite well. I don't think we'll actually be able to get to the point where I was trying to get to, so we're just going to retreat back out of the range of the enemy artillery and hope for the best. It's a shit ton of troops, and you would think the Union would be able to you know, sort of uh, do quite well given how many troops I've given them. But uh, I'm not so sure. We'll see. Seems like they have everyone moving along this river towards this area, which I'm not too sure about. They keep sort of bottlenecking themselves. There is, I mean, the map is very much bottlenecks everywhere. But, I mean, there are easier ways to move forward than to, you know, move everyone in kind of the same position. Let's move the cannons a little bit more forward in case the enemy breaks through. And... Uh, now we get our 12 pounder ready to bombard the enemy and we get our howitzer ready to start bombarding. I don't know if it... no one's actually within range of the howitzers as of yet. But hopefully that will change as the enemy is moving forward. Um, British taking quite a while to actually get to the front here. I'm thinking 1st Brigade might have to move towards this house and cover this area right here as the enemy they will have the forest though so I'm not too sure we will hold on our side and then the British hopefully the British will move out onto that side and I think it's high time we moved into line given how close to the enemy positions we have arrived and then these troops like that. Oh, the British are forming into uh, battle formation. And they're riding straight for this choke point. Where we have the Lightning Brigade. Which unfortunately for the Lightning Bra Brigade is stuck right down here. As the British approach. Boom. I think that might have very well been one of their own shells. Because I'm pretty sure all the Union artillery started bombarding their own. Oh no! One of the cannons. I gave you really good cannons. And now you're gonna throw them away by riding them straight into British Hussars. You had two 32 pounder howitzers. And now you're gonna lose both of them because you continued just to ride them straight into British Hussars. They send away the Lightning Brigade and we'll see the, they've got Iron Brigades and whatnot coming up so that should hopefully hold. But the British Hussars just won us quite a major victory here by killing off their cannons. Um, no, actually doing that well of a job at killing off the cannons because we've got still four cannons in this one and four in this one. But the Union does not really take care of its troops and it marches into the Hazards rather than stand to shoot them down. 
So the Sans will be able to inflict quite a bit of damage on the enemy. And the Americans have advanced quite far on this side. Which is going to be a problem because the British are not there to respond to this move. I'm going to move my cavalry to the other side of this hill. We have a possibility of charging down in case that becomes a possibility. Right now, damn, the Hussars, they're just stopping up all of these. I mean, if I had known this, I'd probably move across and take this hill. I think it might be too late to do that. But we're going to tr we're going to be bold and we're going to try this anyways. I'm going to dismount my cavalry and we can fire from this side. And then I'm going to tell my artillery once the British cavalry is defeated here, we will focus in all our effort to Oh, they just broke the iron brigade. I think it's their mortars I give them as targeting their own men. And kind of blowing this this could be an absolute rout if the uh, enemy keeps blowing up their own men. I'm going to tell my cannons to hold fire so they're ready. And we actually got, we got a bit of a fight here. Pennsylvania Infantry Regiment. Suaves. Are firing across. However, more British cavalry coming in and we know that is dangerous. Right. My cavalry is here. We'll tell them to dismount. Wrong button. There we go. Dismount. Move up to the edge and see if they can go ahead and help the British by shooting the heavy artillery battalion in the back. And then we've got 3rd Brigade moving in to take position here. Oh, we're receiving fire from the enemy now. Quite a lot as well. However, I believe my cavalry is going to be able to get quite a few kills here. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of Union troops. And British cavalry has sent the enemy off, but they took a massive volley. And they kind of shot to pieces here. British are advancing on that side. So it looks like it's going to be a lot better battle this time around. Okay, my Dragoons. Opening fire. We probably might shoot some British in this, but... I mean, the British cavalry has already sent two units away. And both those cannons. And the cannons did not rally. Cannons did not rally. Minnesota Volunteers. Heavy artillery. And what else is in there? Lightning Brigade. And the British... Damn, the British cavalry is so overpowered. They just... Oh, they just broke everything. I guess with the aid, that little aid of me shooting. Just broke everything. Right. We've got the equivalent kind of of two brigades and all their artillery. Just blasted away by one unit of British but bloody Canadian Hussars. That doesn't seem overpowered at all. Then again, we knew cavalry was quite overpowered in this mod. Since you can't form square against it. Jesus Christ, though. Just absolutely slaughter them. Look at the ratio of uh, Canadian cavalrymen to uh, Union soldiers. That's crazy. Right. Mount. Mount up. And I think my artillery just sent the way. Oh, they shot down the enemy general. And one of the other howitzers. So at this point, they only have the mortars. Oh, the British cavalry's back. We're not going to give up that easy. Right, turn a little bit. Otherwise, you probably will miss most of the fighting. 
British infantry fighting back and forth here with the Americans. A lot of Americans have been pushed back. But we've got quite a few British units being pushed back as well. What's this? Allied general has fallen. I think he might very well. I don't see any Union fire coming this way, so... It might be that we shot him. Um, we're not going to tell the British anything about this, but we might have shot our allies. Oh, they did rally a unit over there. Cameron Highlanders. No, that's actually a fresh unit. Hopefully the Cameron Highlanders will kind of rally the others. Oh, no, the uh, bloody Hussars is over here. This is our unit. I, as I recall, I didn't give it any chevrons. It's almost a full chevron. What's wrong with that unit? Something, clearly. Right. Once again, even though I limited the amount of troops the British had, they're still claiming all the glory by charging down the Americans. I mean, they, all they needed was one cavalry unit to completely break them. This is uh, rather aggravating. I'm about to open fire on my own ally pretty soon. These Canadian Hussars. Bloody killers. Bloody killers, I'd say. Right. Um, we have kind of a mass round of British troops now on this side. So... Without the massive amount of troops, as I've given them in previous battles, they weren't really able to continue that charge. The Americans coming really close though. But once again, the British go into tangle with them bayonet style. In an absolute mess. However, we are kind of shoo shooting at everything moving in front of us. Right, I don't think these guys are coming back. We're hitting a bit in front of us, so, but it's too late to actually move the units. The thing is, if they come to, if it comes to push a bayonet, I can send this unit in to sort of add on to the just piling on these guys. Keep it up, man. The Americans coming very close. They definitely don't need to do it as well. These guys. I wonder if they actually have increased fire rate. We're not going to see because they're broken. And it looks like the Americans are trying to charge our position. Rest of the line seem to be holding. They seem to be focusing a lot over there. Oh. The higher volunteers were forced away. Oh, are they going to be able... No, they weren't able to fire. Why are they moving so hella close? Let's see if we can charge them down. We can whip them, boys. We can whip them. And with that counter charge, we saw off a large portion of the American troops on this side and we're just gonna continue through everything over there but we can see there's a lot more troops here so we'll hold the rest of the line oh they're exhausted now the thing is though as long as you just don't tell them to charge you saw how they went from being exhausted to moving at a snail's pace to when I... Oh shit, this unit's actually lining up to fire at us. And as soon as I tell them not to... Um, 
run about like that, they immediately just go into back into sort of normal speed. So you can kind of break that that sort of um, feature of the mod. Looks like the Americans don't really have enough men anymore to be able to pull off a successful uh, attack on our units. If you guys could start shooting that would be nice. And just send those side ladders away. The Highlanders could very well stop us from... Uh, well, they clearly stopped and they, they actually really saved all these retreating troops. Otherwise, I'd just gone through everything. And it seems like they might even win this encounter. In terms of just the amount of casualties they're causing on my men. Uh, however... I've got artillery and uh, now the Highlanders decided to stop shooting and mar just march into our fire instead. Oh, you don't actually need to move forwards. The enemy is coming to you. So if you could please just hold your position and open fire on the enemy as they uh, come up the side here. It's going to be a close one volley. Oh, come on, fire. No! My men were forced back. I am targeting them with the artillery now. On this side, the British seem to be taking care of... Uh, all the enemy troops. You know what? I could easily break these guys probably with my cavalry. We just need to make an opening for them so they get through. I want to see where these guys are going though. It seems like they're going way more for the middle. So we kind of have to open up the gap. Like this. And the continuous artillery fire seem to have broken them. Now we'll charge. Now it's time for the French cavalry to charge down retreating troops. Go for the uh, California volunteers. And similar to uh, what happened with that British uh, Hussar unit, the Union troops are stuck in a very unfavorable position and get overrun by the European cavalry. Continue through, get the Ohio volunteers. Single bloody unit of Indiana volunteers. Tell them to focus in the artillery on that. The British have fought back and forth over this area and have finally kind of pushed the Americans back. And looks like the Americans now are in full retreat everywhere. I'll advance my cavalry on this side. And I think there's a crossing point up there so we can get around the flank without uh, having to fight, um, go straight into uh, the Union artillery, which is over there somewhere. We do have their mortars over there, and we do have their mortars over there, and those are the last units that we need to get. That one French unit that routed has not come back yet. 
And it's actually gonna leave the field. We have a few enemies rallying. We'll join the advance and force the enemy away. I think once this one and I'm actually able to uh, charge this one down it will be all ogre for the uh, US troops. We've got the Wisconsin infantry actually in a really good position when they're all tangled up like that. Looks like they could very well be trying to escape over Could be trying to, uh, yeah, they're escaping over to this side. Go and charge those guys down. We get in a position to shoot these guys down. Someone's rallying over here. It's the colored infantry making a stand. My cavalry is moving around. We do have a crossing point over here, yes. And there is where I will get at the Union Mortars. It might very well be so that this unit will get there before them though. Right, continue on to the next one. And now we open fire on the Wisconsin Infantry. I thought they would break under the first volley more or less. They are wavering. But I thought it would go like that because there's more or less no US troops left on the field. And there they're broken and forced to retreat. And there's a, just a massive column of the Union troops retreating at this point. They do have one troop over here. Those colored infantry are still there. Fighting, holding off the British. Down in the riverbed, so they're kind of covered from uh, the artillery fire. Nice, we got that. Um, tell the cavalry to sweep down, capture as many of these guys as possible. If the British just stopped and opened fire, I'm pretty sure this unit, which is shaken, would retreat and that would be the battle. We've got British Canadian garrison opening fire. Most likely it's going to be by push of bayonet then. Oh, the British light infantry is stopping to fire. A single shot. And that was it. And then we'll be down to the... Uh, Canadian Militia. They are right next to each other. Yeah, it's going to be down to bayonets, isn't it? And they didn't stay for long. Right, given that everyone has kind of... Yes, everyone has retreated. We'll tell the cannons to hold fire. There's a lot of troops retreating, so I don't think... We might have killed as many as we thought, but... The battlefield is... I mean, these... Hope... Ah, oh, the thing is, I won't be able to see... My allies' records, will I? So we'll just have to kind of calculate how many of the the troops the British got. There's a lot of Union troops everywhere. This is the problem, of course, with fighting with AI. They're not particularly clever, and it leads to battle like this, where there's an absolute massacre on uh, the AI side. But there we have it the uh, Anglo-French intervention into the American Civil War has ended in an Anglo-French 
victory. So let's jump over and take a look at the statistics of this battle. Here it is! And uh, what we can see is that the uh, British... I don't know why they, why I'm put as the... Wait, I have the British flag, but I was playing as the French team, so I don't know how this works. Is this my score? Or is this must be... Okay, so this is probably my right score. And this must be the... I can't tell though, because, I mean... Hmm... I must have killed the most. But did I though? Those hussars killed a lot, so I'm not entirely sure. We can see that the uh, the US forces though had a piss poor for performance with only about uh, being able to inflict 1500 casualties. 500 for this army and they deployed 4500. That is really poor. And this one, deploying a thousand less, actually got almost twice as many. So I'm not entirely sure what the difference was there, but the m really high losses. I don't know which one of these is mine. I played as the French, but I don't know. I guess I only lost. It seems as though this would be me, even though they put the picture over here. Because um, I didn't lose that many men, so this is probably mine. But I think these the statistics here seems very low for the British. And um, if we go into the individual statistics, we can see that my highest killing unit killed 761 enemies. Which is uh, kind of a lot. And this unit only chased, I mean this chased down retreating enemies. We saw that that Hussar unit. How many of these units then? I mean the Hussar unit must have stood, stood for most of the British kills. Given that he worked his way through basically to brigade size of uh, enemy troops. And he killed like half in probably each unit. And then he even, even some more troops. So I mean I... I wouldn't think it's uh, that unreasonable to say that half of the British kill was all uh, done by a single unit, which is kind of astonishing. Anyways, if we look over at my, uh, we can see that my, one of my cavalry units managed to get 761 kills, most of which though was chasing down retreating troops. Most of it seems to have gone, most of the actual like battle fighting uh, was done by the infantry. I, but the thing is, I didn't even deploy that many units. My cannons did so so in comparison, and we have, I mean, I you the reserve brigade. I didn't even use them at all. They didn't even, and even then, like this must have been third brigade. They were hardly used either. No, third brigade. This must be second brigade. Second brigade. The ones in the middle, hardly used. So with only two, I only needed six infantry units, the cavalry and the cannons, and we still managed to. Jesus Christ! Anyways, there we have it. I mean, there's not a lot of more, and I bet people are kind of going. You know what? Where is that Bavarian campaign? I want to see the Bavarians. Um, so I have like one, two more ideas, but then we'll go over to the Bavarians. So with that said, I'll uh, say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoy this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!